Donnie and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business, we can help. It is Friday, and all of our guests today, including Thomas Drance from The Athletic, standing by in Nashville, brought to you by our friends Al Chris Manson and Co. at the Whistler Golf Club. Opening day, May 10th. Oh, yes. Canucks and Predators uh, tonight, uh, Game 6. Archer Seelofs will start in goal, not surprisingly, no. uh, for the Canucks. Joining us now again from Tennessee, the Volunteer State, Thomas Drance, who, by the way, will be joining us tomorrow as well. <laughs> According to me, moments ago. Thomas, how are you, sir? Well, I have to free up my schedule tomorrow. I land around 3 p.m. and I've Perfect. got my wife's birthday party, but I can fit you guys in in a, uh, in a narrow window, I'm sure. Perfect. That's I, good. I, That's I, had good. A, I had a brain fart uh, moments ago. Okay. Uh, oh, absolutely. And people who watch this show uh, know that. Uh, not when you're on. Only when we're on, no. uh, Thomas. Do you understand why the Canucks are putting so much faith in Archer Seelofs? Well, I, I mean, he's performed to a level that you certainly do understand it. I mean, he has been good in his two starts, although I, I don't know that he's hit the level that DeSmith did in Game 3, where, where I thought he kind of thieved a, a pretty key win for this team in that game. Um, you know, it's interesting. It's interesting for sure. Uh, of course, Seelovs, as the starter, not officially confirmed by Rick Tockett, but uh, they weren't hiding it. Like after, at game five, they were really trying to do the uh, hide the tell of who's starting. Mm. But but I stuck behind while the Canucks did player availabilities to watch the goaltenders because I, I wanted to know. Uh, to me, that's kind of the story of of the day. Um, you know, not not whatever uh, a pl player quote we get uh, out of the room. So I stuck around and watched it. And and there's really no doubt in my mind, Seelovs was going through preparation to start. Um, all indications are that. And, and I don't think the Canucks are really hiding it. They're just not officially confirming it. Um, and, and I guess that makes sense. You know, there's enough stylistic differences between DeSmith and Seelovs that, that maybe there's some value there. Although we're way past the point where league should require teams to disclose their starter, like officially, you mm -hmm. know, from the team's PR staff, the way they would confirm a starting lineup in the NBA an hour before tip or, you know, the way the NFL does injury reports. I mean, it, it is a bit of a ludicrous pantomime. And and I don't think one that talk it would do if it were in an organizational decision that, hey, there might be some small edge here in keeping the Predators somewhat in the dark until the warm-up skate. Thomas, every time you hear um, Rick Talkett talk about the two goaltenders he has available uh, right now, when he mentions Archer Shelovs, he always mentions the word calm or cool and or cool. How much cooler and calmer is Archer Shelovs versus Casey DeSmith, in your opinion? You know, it, it's an interesting one. I think the moment isn't too big for him. Mm -hmm. I, I do think to Smith, because of the size, because of what what the lack of size causes him to do in net, uh, I think he can be a little bit more vulnerable to like rebounds, uh, permitting rebounds than uh, a larger, more athletic, younger goaltender like Seelovs. I, I suspect that that's what Talkit is referring to uh, with the word calm. When he when he uses the word cool, I assume he's talking about C loves his Hugo Boss uh, dress shirt, um, <laughs> but the but the calmness. My, my guess would be that he's talking about the rebound control and, and perhaps the sense that you know Taki gets. I mean, the other thing that Taki always comments on when he talks about C loves is size. Right, he looks big in net, mm -hmm. and, and so I wonder. I wonder too if the the calmness that Taki's referring to might be projected somewhat. That Taki feels somewhat more calm with C loves in net. You know, dismiss played well. We all know that, and yet. In the second half of the season, we did see him start somewhat less frequently than, than we did at the start of the year, right? I, I mean, through about January, uh, you know, January, February, like Demko was on pace for 55-ish starts. And then the club started to use Demko more heavily. And see, and the Smith starts kind of, they didn't evaporate, but they became fewer and further between. And, and then, of course, once he had the ball and had an opportunity to run with it, I, I do think there was a moment in time where uh, Stilovs was kind of option one uh, for Vancouver, and then we're seeing that play out again in the playoffs. So, you know, they have three good goaltenders. You need three good goaltenders. Uh, I, I do think this just reflects the fact that 
in the coaching staff's estimation, the the margin between Seelovs and DeSmith in, in terms of their ability to give this club a level of goaltending that permits them to win, uh, you know, it, it is non-existent. Uh, Thomas, 12 goals in five games, 18 shots per game. Are you surprised he's not mixing things up to try and create more offense? A little bit, a little bit. I mean, there aren't a lot of buttons to push, Rick. That's my that's my honest opinion. You know, I they send Pod Colson down to the American League. I mean, I guess you could flip flop Pod Colson in for Phil D. Giuseppe, but what does that really do, mm -hmm. right? It's it's not like the Canucks have a bunch of you know high end younger forwards who are just you know on, on the fringes of the roster because of experience. You know, you need offense. Neil Zaman's not the answer, right? Like we all know that. Um, and then in terms of mixing the lines up, you know, if you if you don't want to separate Joshua and Garland, and this team's shown us that they clearly do not, you know, I mean, what what other options do you have to sort of like give Pedersen more help or find a player who can convert on a higher percentage of their sh chances uh, with Besser and Miller? You know that there's just not a lot of options with the way that this roster is constructed. Um, you know, this team this team hasn't generated enough volume in terms of shots, shot attempts, scoring chances all season, right? They've really dined out on being hyper-efficient. Uh, they've, they've really dined out on converting perimeter shots into interior shots off of rebounds and deflections and, and sort of second stick finishing. And, and honestly, some of that's worked for them in this series. Like, they have shot a high percentage, right? They have made Saros look silly on occasion. Um, so a, lo a lot of their game still has translated, but but when you look at the overall shot totals, when you look at sort of the process behind this team's offensive generation, you know, uh, they don't profile like a contender fr from an offensive standpoint, just just from, a, from the standpoint of what they can generate. They obviously profile like a contender in terms of just how glitzy their, their top of the roster star talent is, but... That, that's kind of different from the way the team goes about creating offense. And, and you can kind of see that, you know, as you watch other series. So, um, you know, this team does need to generate more. They're going to need to test Soros more frequently than they have in most of the games this series tonight, I think, uh, especially given that Soros is now coming off of his best game. And, and, and you know, you definitely don't want the Predator starter to, to feel like he has traction, right? You don't, you don't want to go into the second half of game six tonight and have Soros feeling really good about his game. You definitely don't want to go into Game 7 on Sunday and having Soros feeling really good about his game. So, um, you know, the, the club does need to make life harder on, on the Predators goaltender. They, they need to generate more. A and yet, you know, I think a lot of what has worked for them all season has also worked for them this series. It's just that margins get tighter when you're facing the same opponent seven times or, or six, a, a maximum of seven times over a two-week span. Uh, and they have the ability to really, like, hone in on how to prevent you from getting chances. Uh, Thomas, uh, Nashville won 61% of the face-offs in the last game. If this happens again tonight, the Canucks are going to spend a good chunk of the game chasing the game. I mean, the, the face-off circle, they got to get a whole lot better tonight. Yeah, and this team's been good on draws all season. Uh, you know, I, I don't know that I'd expect a 60-40 edge for the Predators again. At the end of the day, the faceoffs matter, and they especially matter in, in leverage, right? The, the offensive zone draw, or the, the key offensive or defensive zone draws late in the game, end of the period, start of the power play. I mean, there are individual draws that matter a ton, but there's also a lot of them where, you know, 60%, 40%, at the end of the day, it's one puck battle. Like, it's, it's one puck battle, right? And there's going to be 10 more within a minute. And, and the results of those matter just as much. So I, I'm not dwelling on the faceoffs personally. Uh, the, the, it's more important to me that the Canucks win the key draws than it is that they win 60% or 50% or hold their own from a percentage standpoint. Um, you know, that, that partly why some of the best face-off men in this league, like, don't even use their best moves in the neutral zone. They save them for, mm. for when it really matters. Um, it, it's really about the individual draws, the individual moments. Uh, those are the ones that are key. Um, you know, the overall percentage, I, I, I don't think is going to dictate the outcome tonight. And very quickly, uh, Thomas, uh, bonus, Burnett, talk it. Who wins the Adams Award? Oh, it's going to be talk. Come on. I mean, and, and it should be. Uh, this was an incredible coaching job. I think talk it designed, a, 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 you know, a, a narrow path, a specific script for how this team could win games, um, how they could disguise in some ways the lack of mobility on the back end, how they could create offense w without taking chances that would leave them vulnerable off the rush. Hmm. Uh, I mean, when you talk about, 
Canucks hockey, when you talk about this team's identity, it's so well defined. Like, you, you know how they're going to come out. You know how they're going to forecheck. You know how they're going to use that neutral zone wedge to try and counter. You know how they play with a lead. Uh, this is yeah. one of the most impressive year over year, like single season defensive turnarounds we've ever seen. He's gotten yeah. this team organized, and we know exactly what this team wants to do. Uh, it's a credit to him. And, and I, I and appreciated his quote sort of sharing the shine with his players, his coaching staff, uh, the general manager, even ownership. Um, you know, I, I thought that was a, a classy way to handle it, especially on the day of, of a crucial game for him and his team. Thomas, did the person who designed Arthur Shilov's shirt also design the artwork in behind you? It yeah. looks eerily <laughs> similar. Yeah. Yeah, you're not wrong. Oh, my gosh. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. That is Look beautiful. Look at that. It's an exact they replica. Straight from, yeah, they got it straight from Dan Flash's. A perfect print for your dress shirt. <laughs> a perfect way to end this interview. Thank you, Thomas. And we'll talk to you next week, not tomorrow. You're off the hook. I, I got to say, that that moment, by the way, where my window started compressing, that, <laughs> was, um, that was actually quite terrifying. I felt like I needed to, like, push back. You, you, you Don't worked, do that again, Ryan. You worked your way through it, Thomas. You're a pro. <laughs> no. Ah! <laughs> Cheers, guys.